right, good morning. Thank you for joining me for this uh, moment. I'd like to start off by recognizing the motto of our church, Disciples of Christ. And I think it's apropos for what I want to say. And the motto of this church is, where the scriptures speak, we speak. Where the scriptures are silent, we're silent. And I want to apply this to what I have to say today. Uh, recently, one of my son's closest friends uh, took his life. And uh, it was a tragic event in my son's life. <clears throat> he was one of the first ones to get there. And uh, he was the one that was supposed to take care of his dog and some of his personal effects. So he was close. And I knew it really affected him. So I gave it a little bit of time. And the next day I called my son up and I said, Jesse, I said, I'm really sorry to hear about Michael. And what he said just blew my mind. He says, Dad, it doesn't matter anyway because he's going to hell. And boy, I was upset. Uh, I said, Jesse, that's not true. I said, if you can find in the Bible where it says that a person that takes his own life uh, is committed to uh, hell, I said, I'll buy it, but it's not there. It's just not there. Well, here's what the deal is. My son was just parroting what uh, goes on in the denomination that he belongs to. But anyway, in the Catholic Church for hundreds of years, they preached that if you took your life, it was a grave sin and your soul was bound for hell. You weren't allowed a church funeral. You weren't allowed burial in, a, in the church cemetery. You were just out there. Well, I'm telling you what right now, that's not the Jesus that I know. My Jesus seeks the one from the 99. He go, tears the house upside down to find the lost coin. But anyway, I want to just kind of wrap this up a little bit. There are roughly a half a million attempts at suicide each year. Roughly 29,000 of those people are successful. There are warning signs, uh, just like with cancer need to learn what they are and if somebody does commit suicide uh, let's let's grieve with them let's treat them like a like a normal death let's pray with them let's listen let's do what we can but if you know somebody that's in trouble uh, ask questions try to get them help stuff like that and you know suicide uh, it's in the Bible King Saul the first uh, king of Israel he fell on his own sword, taking his own life. In another instance, Satan tried to get Jesus to commit suicide by climbing up on the top of the pinnacle of the temple and casting himself down. And that's what I want to say. This instant that I just mentioned, Satan at the pinnacle of the temple and everything, this took place in Jesus' mind. That's where Satan attacks us, is in our minds. So we've got to have a sharp, clear mind and we need to go to God and ask him for help in that direction. There's one other thing I want to say. Uh, Pope John Paul in 1992 rescinded uh, that catechism which declared uh, uh, suicide a grave sin. So it no longer is applied. But my son didn't get the memo. You know, a lot of times things are so ingrained uh, that they don't seem to go away. An example would be Mary Magdalene. Okay, she was cast out seven demons, but over the years, she's been equated with prostitution. Nowhere in the Bible is it claimed that Mary Magdalene was a prostitute. There's even the societies out there called the Magdalene Project, which deals with prostitutes. And that's what I'm saying. These things are ingrained.